मैडम एंड अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू टाइम्स नाउ द इलेक्शन स्पेशल द इलेक्शन यात्रा शो आई एम प्रतिभा एंड टुडे वाज द फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ पोलिंग एंड अ लॉट ऑफ फोकस फॉर द बीजेपी स्पेशली हैज बीन द साउथ वी आर जॉइनिंग यू फ्रॉम कोची इन द एर्नाकुलम लोकसभा कॉन्स्टिट्युएंसी इन केरला हाउ इज द बैटल गोइंग टू प्ले आउट that is going to be the big question southern states like tamil nadu kerala karnataka andhra and telangana have been the focus of the bjp in its star so far narrative the question remains in kerala can the bjp switch its fortunes or not uh, in fact we visited the foothills of shabrimala as well to find out how that is going to play out but since i mentioned shabrimala we want to start the show showing the cultural heritage of kerala I want to give you a very small story of Lord Ayappa who had learnt the crucial martial art form of Kalari Paitta uh, these are two artists who are going to be joining us uh, Safir as well as Suraj who are going to be showing us a little bit about Kalari Paitta after which we get into the battle that played out on the field not the sword fight here but the battle between the BJP the Congress and the left take a look at this art form start saw the battle that played out uh, with the swords uh, the sword fighting that we played out for you here is to just understand the culture of kerala uh, as we immerse this culture and history of kerala it's important to note the sword fighting here a bigger battle that's also playing out in politics the congress versus the bjp versus the left how is that going to play out the india alliance is not together here the prime minister himself has also spoken about the fact that in uh, delhi they dined together but in kerala they fight it out how is that going to play out and in this battle between the congress and the uh, left is it going to be advantage bjp that's the big question we're going to be discussing that in a lot more but first up Yesterday if you joined us in our show you remember that when we were in Tiruvannamalai we didn't see any posters of Rahul Gandhi interestingly though he is an MP from Kerala 
was it the same we visited patanam tita as well interestingly it's not just the star candidates like shashi tharoor who are banking on their own charisma but it's also the other congress candidates take a look at what i'm talking about in the battle between the bjp versus the congress versus the left in kerala how is it playing out on the ground we're reporting from patanam tita in the foothills of the shabrimala temple one of the seats that the bjp has identified as a winnable seat so let's look at the campaign posters that have been put in place so this is anil antony the bjp's candidate who has been fielded from here the prime minister's pictures prominently feature here remember in tiruvananthapuram we spoke about how prime minister modi's pictures are there in all the bjp posters similar here as well with anil antony the prime minister the bjp banking on modi with a guarantee or prime minister modi's guarantee when he comes back to power that there will be development in contrast look at the congress poster so in tiruvananthapuram we had spoken about shashi tharoor's posters being everywhere uh, he is somebody who is known as uh, a leader who is well known across the state he uh, has banked on his own appeal so is it only in the high profile candidates like shashi tharoor that they are banking only on themselves that's clearly not the case uh, this is the sitting mp from the constituency anto anthony and in these posters as well you don't see a single picture of rahul gandhi anywhere this is not the only picture uh, we are seeing pictures across as well here's another campaign poster as well here as well we are not seeing any picture of rahul gandhi or any of the other national leaders anto anthony on one side uh, the congress symbol of course the congress party symbol is here but there are no pictures of rahul gandhi it seems to be completely missing from the posters on the other hand of course left as well thomas isaac is a candidate from here uh, he has put pictures of uh, his time as a finance minister of kerala speaking about the work that he has done uh, but the left and the congress say that the bjp has to bank on the prime minister because nobody knows the bjp's candidate the question being the bjp on the other side uh, in their response saying the prime minister has been known for as somebody who has delivered on his promise and that's the reason why we are seeing the prime minister's posters the congress and the left are embarrassed of the legacy that they have and that's the reason why they have not put in the posters of any of their national leaders when why not constituency has rahul gandhi contesting from there in the other constituencies across kerala not much presence of rahul gandhi is posters seem to be missing from all the congress banners that have been put in place you saw it why is it that rahul gandhi's posters are missing from the ground left versus the congress party who is uh, taking advantage of it is it going to be advantage the bjp is there a tacit understanding really between the bjp and the left as rahul gandhi has pointed out uh, this is what we are going to be talking about we have esteemed joy a guest joining us this evening uh, we have p krishna das bjp spokesperson henry austin spokesperson of the kerala congress as well as mohammed shah iuml member uh thank you all for joining us where uh, you know it's a very very scenic location here a uh, big battle playing out we've uh, covered tiruvananthapuram we've gone to uh, patanam titta and now we've come to the ernakulam constituency i want to ask mr krishna das first on what he believes is the situation on ground in kerala overall uh, some say in fact today as we were speaking to some of the candidates they said that in charso par the two zeros for the bjp is going to be from kerala uh, every time in uh, national election uh there are a chance for uh, uh, udf and ldf they will join together against bjp uh, their national policy and in state policy also they have joined together for uh, against bjp and they are trying to uh, defeat bjp by cross voting this time that will not happen in kerala because all the people they know that uh, modi government is giving more uh, development and more uh, infrastructural and uh, as well as the rural development to kerala and financial help to kerala also and all all projects in kerala were sanctioned by the uh, central government uh, and all type of people all section of the people they are believe, they are believing that uh, kerala people have much uh, uh, concern from the central government and modi government is giving much preference to uh, kerala development and kerala uh, infrastructural activities also uh, that that will be beneficial to uh, kerala election in uh, this time bjp okay. 2024 and uh, this will benefit to bjp also the development okay. of central government in fact when you speak of development uh, the story from the southern states is completely different whether it is kerala whether it is tamil nadu whether it is karnataka the argument when the bjp says that we are going to come with the development agenda is that these states are well developed in terms of human in indices as well these are the states that are doing exceptionally well so we have proven that we don't need the bjp here what do you think works for the you know congress or for the left here 
What do you think is the situation on ground uh, as we enter the first phase of the elections? I, like you rightly pointed out, uh, there is in fact a world famous Kerala model of development which actually showcases a, a very high uh, life quality indicators at a very low per capita But income. Kerala was at the brink of bankruptcy and you had to go to that the is, Supreme that Court. we would attribute to the financial mismanagement of the current state dispensation. Hmm. Uh, but uh, for us, we don't need the BJP model of development. Uh, not at least in terms of the secularistic credentials or the democracy which is in peril right now. So for us, uh, the Kerala has uh, an enlightened perception of uh, the democracy and the secularistic credentials of Indian, India as a country. So that spirit of India has to be revived. And okay. for that, uh, I think Congress is well positioned to uh, come back to power here. Okay. Uh, we have Mohamed Shah from the IUML. Uh, before I go to him, I want to ask you, we just played out a report from Patanam Titta as well, similarly in Tiruvannandapuram as well. For the Congress candidates, there are no posters of Rahul Gandhi. He's an MP from Kerala. You're projecting him as the national leader, the top leader of the Congress party. Why are his posters missing from the candidates' posters across Kerala? We don't need Rahul Gandhi's posters because he is well entrenched in the hearts of Keralites. Okay. We don't need the posters. So, we don't need a reminder of Rahul Gandhi because he is there. So if the BJP is putting up leader. posters with Prime Minister Modi, why doesn't the Congress also put up posters exactly. with Rahul? Exactly. They need uh, Modi's posters to remind the people that uh, he is a, uh, in Kerala. In, in Kerala, at least, uh, Modi is not the uh, de facto leader of uh, uh, I mean, the coming government. Hmm. Uh, we, we perceive that Rahul Gandhi will be uh, in uh, power the next time around. Okay. Mr. Mohamed Shah, what do you think is the situation on ground? Uh, the left and the Congress party are together in the India alliance, but here they are not together. They are fighting it out. Who do you think this advantage will go to? In Kerala, people know well who to be elected. And Kerala people know the situation in the entire country. So they want to bring back the secular credentials of this country. We don't want DBC politics. Even in BJP cannot say DBC politics in Kerala. They come with developments and all because they will not, they will not say, get anything if they are saying about divisive politics in Kerala. So what happens is now UDF and Congress is in the forefront. 20 out of 20 is going to happen in Kerala. That is why we are having an apprehension whether there can be an alliance, in the internal arrangement between the CPM and BJP. It may happen in two, three constituencies. They will try to, even if it is there. There is no scope for BJP or even for LDF in Kerala. So 2020, will last time it was 19 out of 20. Now this time 20 out of, because in all over India, the scope is with India. Okay, but since you are from the IUML, for you to say that BJP is divisive, that's the same charge that's leveled at the Congress party because it is aligned with you. That IUML is a divisive party, it has, uh, you know, religion and identity politics at the center of it. It's not like that. You, 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 you. you. You are misleading the people. What happens is IUML he is not a religious whatever. You, you know, in, after 1989, whether there can be a political party which is having religious identity? No, there cannot be. It's a secular party in which when a minority politics comes, in a democracy there, there will be minority. Minority is protected under Article 29, you know it well. So in such situation, minority politics is all over in the world in, a, in every democracy. So in such situation, it's not a religious party. The minority is having some concerns. That concerns are properly addressing by a minority political party. Okay. It, it doesn't mean that it's a religious party. We are not with religion. We are with all in Muslim League. You can see several leaders who are Hindu leaders are there. Hmm. My, my party in secretary. fact, when Rahul Gandhi was asked this question, he said IUML is an absolutely secular party. IUML leveling the charge that BJP is a communal party. Uh, what do you have to say? Is this a sentiment on ground? Do people believe? Is there a uh, you know uh, expectation against the BJP? Is there a fear of the BJP being divisive per se, especially in places where the BJP does not have a presence for now? If you look into manifesto of Congress and uh, UDF, they have released earlier in national level and state level also. Uh, in page number 8, they have specifically stated that uh, Article 15, Article 29, Article 26 and Article 15 of the Constitution of India has to be protected. At the same time, they have, they, they have to be reminded that Article 14, Article 19 and 21, that was not uh, discussed in air, either in their uh, national level uh, manifesto or state level uh, manifesto. In Vaina, Rahul Gandhi conducted a procession in their uh, elect, uh, election yatra. What was the situation? Whether uh, UDF included the uh, flag of uh, Muslim League there? No. 
They have excluded Muslim League flag uh, from their uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, procession. They have in fact also missed out the Congress Party's flag from the yeah, from Rahul Gandhi's yeah, yatra. They are fearing. They are fearing about the uh, India forward. But why the Congress flag yeah, missing from Rahul Gandhi's yeah, yatra? Let me just add on that. I can feel the frustration of uh, Krishna Das that uh, Muslim League flags are not around this time <laughs> because last no, no, time that was the charges never. No, 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 Muslim League flag. flags are not there. The Congress flags are also yes. not there. So what is happening? They're Rahul Gandhi's posters are not there in other constituencies. In why not constituency where Rahul? Rahul Gandhi is contesting, the Congress flags are missing, the state Congress chief comes on record and says, as part of our strategy, we've decided not to use the Congress flags. Why is that? Because we don't need a flag to remind people of Rahul Gandhi. You don't need the flag, you don't need Rahul Gandhi. He's entrenched. Uh, 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 we're protecting the candidate, but we are having the slogans of candidates with us, not the flags. Hmm. Because it's a UDF. We are in a UDF. Hmm. UDF will be doing like that only. This is not the first time. That that fear is only because no, no. of the uh, they have, want uh, LDF votes. That's uh, all. May I also if just they, add if that they, uh, they, if they want to get the LDF votes, they have to remove their uh, flags from their posters. No, no, nine okay. their, uh, their elections. We are having okay. here. Nineteen MPs well. of the There's Congress that. Party of the uh, you know, UDF, UDF here in Kerala in 2019. Do you see that changing this time around? Previously, like he's saying, in Lok Sabha elections there is a tacit understanding between the left and the Congress, but this time around the left has also fielded some. Very, very strong candidates against the Congress party, including uh, in constituencies like what we mentioned in Tiruvannandapuram as well, known to be a stronghold of the Congress party. But you have uh, LDF also fielding a very strong candidate there. How is that going to play out? Actually, is that LDF, divide in votes going to help BJP? No, the uh, candidate of LDF uh, may not do that well in Tiruvannandapuram. Uh, because we we understand there's a close fight going on there. But okay. uh, Shashi Tharoor will certainly emerge victorious there. There's no doubt regarding that. Okay. As far as we are concerned, uh, it'll, the result will be better than last time around. Instead of 19, we'll get 20. But this time around, we have uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar who has been fielded from there. Uh, Tiruvannandapuram, if we talk about it. But other than that, you said we'll, this time we'll win 20 out of 20, which means essentially you're also saying that Rahul Gandhi is also going to uh, win from Bayanad constituency, but the left is going to be wiped out completely. We're going to be discussing that and a lot more after a very quick break. Do stay with us. We'll be right back with this fiery debate. Welcome back. Where are the numbers for the Charso power for the BJP going to come from? Uh, are the southern states going to put a full stop to that dream that the Prime Minister, that the BJP has been harboring? That's a big question that we're talking about. But there's a very, very interesting snippet. Kerala is one of the states where RSS is extremely strong. In fact, the density of the RSS shakas in Kerala is much bigger, much higher than the other states in Hindi heartland, including Uttar Pradesh, as well as Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh as well. Why is it that the BJP has still not been able to convert that into vote share as well as seats. That's the question I want to ask you. RSS has been very, very significant in BJP's rise across the country. In Kerala, they're extremely strong whether it comes to floods, anything that happens here, RSS is extremely active. But for some reason, the BJP has still not been able to convert it into seats or even vote share. Uh, there is some political scenario situation in Kerala. Because the LDF, the uh, LDF friend and UDF friend, they will join together against the BJP when uh, there is a chance of a winning of BJP candidate from any of the constituency, either in Kerala, in assembly elections or in national elections also. Uh, in Lok Sabha elections particularly, they are trying to uh, defeat the BJP candidate from Kerala because uh, they want to uh, discredit the BJP in Kerala on the basis of that uh, there are some issues uh, in, as, uh, in different parts of the country. That was the only allegation they are raising, not related to the development, not related to the uh, policies taken by the central government. Uh, no such uh, allegations from either uh, either the left uh, Munani or the UDF Munani in Kerala. The issue related in Kerala basically is related with the political alliance between the UDF and uh, LDF. Uh, they are part of India Munani and they are uh, trying to defeat BJP uh, on the reason that uh, they want to capture all the seats uh, as uh, they, they have already mentioned, their uh, representative already mentioned that uh, they are going to uh, catch all seats. Uh, this time Kerala people realized that the central government is giving more uh, uh, chances to the Kerala, Kerala state also. Uh, even though the Kerala has no, no MP to support the central government since uh, last 10 years in uh, central uh, Modi government, uh, but at the same time the central government is uh, giving all assistance to the uh, Kerala state government and the entire state also for development and other okay. activities. In, in fact, when you mentioned development, recently as well there was a highway that uh, the... Uh, 
there was a lot of chatter on Twitter about, you know, it's a Mahe Talasheri bypass. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, has been speaking about development in Kerala. He has been saying that when he returns to power, Kerala has a, a lot of potential for development that's going to be brought in, apart from, uh, say, in places like Tiruvannandapuram, where the IT boom uh, has passed. Uh, places like Bengaluru, Hyderabad have uh, taken a big beating in terms of the development, but in Tiruvannandapuram, it's not so much. Uh, whether it is issues like that, Rajiv Chandrasekhar talking about how startup India, digital India, all of this have taken a backseat here. In terms of development, uh, do you see any bias towards Kerala? That's something that the Chief Minister has spoken of. But if you speak to any of the union ministers who have also been fielded this time around, they've given a long list of the development that has not been brought by the state, but it has been brought by the centre. Naturally, you see, the devolution of funds is a major issue as far as development is concerned. But uh, if you look at South India and Kerala in particular, we are not getting the same amount of money that uh, North Indian states are getting. Uh, if you look at the southern picture, uh, Karnataka is getting just 15 paise out of the 1 rupee they are giving in taxes. And Kerala is getting only 57 paise. So if you look at uh, a state like UP, they are getting 2.6 rupees. And uh, Bihar is getting around about 7 rupees. So uh, there is a big disparity because that is because the uh, indicators fixed by the Finance Commission. Yes. They have actually changed the uh, benchmark population. Uh, earlier it was based in 1971 population when Kerala had 3.5% of the total Indian population. Now when it has been shifted to 2011, basis of 2011, our population is much lesser because we have uh, controlled our population growth. And now we are being penalized for it. But the per capita GDP in Kerala is much higher than the national average. So you're saying that the state of Kerala is being penalized because it is doing so well because of the tax, uh, tax devolution. It should appear so. Because uh, see, devolution of funds as well as the Finance Commission, mm -hmm. we are supposed the states are bearing 67% of the total expenditure of the mm -hmm. nation. Uh, the centre is collecting all the revenue and uh, they are only devolving 42%. While the states are bearing 67% of the development costs, mm. even the pay commission uh, revision when it comes in, the burden is on the state. Okay. So the 11th pay commission has been implemented in Kerala. So that okay. is an additional extra okay. burden. Very quickly, uh, as we're running out of time, I want to ask uh, very re realistically, what are the numbers that you're giving for the UDF, the LDF and the BJP in Kerala? The BJP will not open account here. They will not be able to do it. They also know it well. Can you say that Rajiv Chandrasekhar is a better candidate than Kumbhanam Rajasekhar? The best candidate was Kumbhanam and Rajagopal in Kerala. Look what he can do. Why are you saying that Rajiv Chandrasekhar is a better candidate? No, but they did increase their vote share there. there. Does they it was, mean that he is a better candidate? They were runner, no. runners up in Tiruvannandapuram previously. Maybe this time around they can Because the people. candidate was Kumbhanam. Okay. You cannot compete Kumbhanam with this person. So we will say that no, there is no scope for BJP in Kerala. Only thing is that BJP may get, come to the second position if CPM support them. CPM supported BJP in so, the last... So CPM first, second will be the BJP? No, no. Usual course, LD, UDF will be the first, okay. UDF, LDF will be the second one. Okay. If the LDF supports BJP, it may happen. If they the will LDF come to supports the, the BJP, your numbers? We are very clear on this. Uh, India um, uh, coalition will be 100%, 20 on 20. And, uh, as By the, India coalition, you mean the Congress? No, the Congress, you mean as the far as I am a Congress person, I am an International huh. Congress spokesperson. Yes. I would say that 20 out of 24 But uh, you, the, uh, you, know, you didn't say UDF, you, you are including left in that? No. no. Uh, you said about, said about 400 seats. It is not 400, it is 200. Now the guarantee is charge of bees. 420. It is not there. There is no guarantee at all. Okay, okay. So what is it? Is 200. One more point. Uh, as far as the BJP style oh. is concerned, uh, our greatest contribution to mathematics is the zero. Double zero in Kerala. So double, it's double digit as well as PMS say, uh, is... acclaimed. Kerala UDF people and LDF people, they are thinking in 1970s period okay. in Kerala, uh, Kerala election. Hmm. That situation is changed in Bengal, then Tripura, then other okay. states also changed. So Kerala also is going to change okay. this time. Give, give us a number, very quickly, one number of the BJP. We, we are... We are, we are Trying for uh, five seats in Kerala. Five seats. Okay, five seats is what the BJP is confident about. The battles playing out in each of the constituencies. In fact, uh, Patanam Titta is one of the five constituencies that has been identified by the BJP as a winnable seat. Uh, what is the situation in the foothill of Shabri Mala? It was a very, very emotive issue in 2019. How is that going to play out this time around? Uh, we'll be back after a very quick break. What's that special report? We've also spoken to the two candidates uh, from uh, Patanam Titta. Stay tuned.
came back. Well, Kerala is known as God's own country. We were in the foothills of Shabarimala, where it's a battle of the Antonies. Anil Antony versus the incumbent MP Anto Antony. The left has fielded Thomas Isaac, the former minister from the constituency. We spoke to the BJP because the BJP believes that this is one of the constituencies where it has a chance of winning. What are his chances like? Listen in to Anil Antony. The Prime Minister, the BJP, has been speaking about how there could be a tourism hub here. Uh, the Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar himself had also remember spoken about how uh, Shabrimala devotees have been suffering because of the failed policy, the anti-Hindu policies of the Congress and the left. What are the promises that Anil Anthony brings to the table? Those are going to be some of the questions that we are going to be asking him. The BJP's candidate from the constituency. Uh, it's a tough battle. Three-time MP of the Congress party, Anto Anthony, is a candidate this time around from the Congress party as well. And of course, on the other side, we also have uh, Thomas Isaac, the left candidate. So we're going to be speaking about how much of a challenge that's going to be. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Anil. It's almost six, uh, seven weeks since I've come here. And I would say something very um, confidently. And that is when we came here itself, we were in a very strong footing. It's a constituency where we, our organization, have good roots. We have good vote, vote share here also. Last election also we did well uh, when compared to any other constituency. And this time, um, uh, from the day I started, we have been gaining momentum almost every single day. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister himself, the, on, the Honorable Prime Minister himself, um, did uh, visit the constituency one day before the elections were announced. And this was the first constituency where the Honorable Prime Minister came uh, after all the candidates were announced. What are the chances of the BJP in Kerala? Like you mentioned, the Prime Minister has campaigned here as well in Patanam Titta. Yeah, so this is a place where already we have uh, good roots. And after I came here almost every single day, we have been gaining momentum. Um, we have, and um, now I can confidently say that we are heading towards victory. Uh, you look at my two political opponents, in this constituency there are a lot of things working in our favour. And this is one of the few elections I would say, which is a pan-India thing, where a two-time sitting Prime Minister is going for his third election. And there is zero anti-incumbency. This is a pro-incumbency way for us across India. The entire country is now uh, showing more and more trust in our Prime Minister, full trust in our Prime Minister. And the biggest strength we have is our Prime Minister's guarantee. Modi's guarantee is our biggest strength. And every uh, single constituency in India, it will resonate. Because each of us, we are standing as a representative of our Prime Minister and the party, which has delivered in unprecedented levels in the last 10 years. Um, uh, like, um, one, we are the fastest growing economy, we are growing fast. And alongside that, we are empowering crores of people. And now, especially when it comes to Kerala, they are seeing the growth of India. They are seeing the India story. They are seeing the India story unfold right in front of their eyes. But then and they also are feeling a little left out. They are seeing, a, they are feeling a little left out because um, you know Kerala is not growing as uh, as it should be. The prime minister is. Um going to be the face of the campaign that uh, Modi would guarantee something that you're talking about. Very interesting that when we went across in Thiruvananthapuram before this as well, we did not find Rahul Gandhi's posters anywhere. It's only Shashi Tharoor's posters. Here as well, Anto Anthony's posters, no posters of the Ra of Rahul Gandhi. Why do you think that is? See, the answer is very obvious. Um, I don't think the Congress party, even the congressman wants to project Mr. Rahul Gandhi much in front of the people because unlike our Prime Minister who has delivered in unprecedented levels in the last 10 years, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi uh, has a history of two decades of non-performance. When he became the MP in Ameti, uh, it was a constituency which was a family bastion where they used to win by 3-4 lakh votes, or 5 lakh votes every single time. But then, uh, but then after two, three victories there, the people completely rejected him and he lost Amiti also. Then he came to Vainad. Last time when he stood in Vainad 
um, certain people created a narration here that Mr. Gandhi could be a possible Prime Minister, etc. So this is one of the biggest reasons why um, when across India, the Bharatiya Janata Party swept, uh, it was a pro-Prime Minister wave last time also. In Kerala, because of certain false narrations, um, the UDF did well here. But then, as a member of parliament itself, Mr. Gandhi has failed miserably in Wayanad. He rarely visits his constituency. Um, uh, in the last uh, five years, um, you know, maybe he might have come there ten times. Uh, so, people in Wayanad themselves are not very happy with this performance. And uh, definitely, um, you can't, some other person cannot go to an election, uh, let's say, saying that we are Rahul Gandhi's candidates. Then uh, I think the people will ensure that uh, more votes will be lost. Okay, so that's the reason why there are no Rahul Gandhi posters here. Uh, but you said the BJP has great prospects here. Rahul Gandhi campaigning from here or contesting from Vayanad maybe helped the Congress party in 2019. The party had 19 seats out of 20 in Kerala. Do you see that change this time around? And Shashi Tharoor, when he was asked about the BJP's prospects, say, said they will get double number, but it's going to be double zero here. I, know. I think he himself is in a very difficult situation this time. We are fairly confident that Trivandrum also will be one of the seats which our party will be adding to our tally of 370 plus. Um, but uh, leaving that aside, one thing which we can confidently say is that the Bharti and the party for the first time had double-digit vo votes last time. And this time we are strongly contesting in double-digit seats. Uh, overall, across India we are expecting more than 370. As a coalition we are expecting 400. And this time it is a certainty that the BJP will open its our account here. We will get multiple number of seats here. And in double-digit seats, we are strongly contesting. So, in the tally of 370 plus, there will be many seats from Kerala. Okay. So, I want to ask you, did your candidacy from the constituency come as a surprise? Uh, and do you think for the BJP leaders, it was a surprise? Yeah, how can the, for the leaders it be a surprise? The decision is taken by the leadership. The, the state leadership, do you think it was a surprise? Was that an initial challenge for you, Mr. P.C. George? As well, there were speculations he would be contesting from there. Your candidacy, were you aware of it and how do you look at it? So we are expecting to win here. Um, when I joined the party here itself, I had said very clearly um, that I joined the party because of my belief in the vision our Prime Minister has for India. Right now you look at the Bharati Janata Party, right now you look at our Prime Minister. He is working with a long-term vision for India in the next 25 years, in the 100th year of our independence. He is working to ensure that we become a developed country, a biggest Bharat. And in our third term, we are aiming and we are certain to be the third largest economy. We are working with long-term and short-term, medium-term objectives. Crores of Indians, crores of young people just like me have been inspired by our PM's vision and we are joining this party. I want to ask you, you know, because you mentioned the Congress party and the prospects that it does not have here, your father, uh, you know, veteran leader in the Congress party, Mr. A.K. Anthony, he himself said that unfortunately he is hoping that you lose from the constituency. What do you think about that? Because, uh, you know, from the Congress party as well, many say that the BJP is never going to find acceptance here because it is seen as a communal party. So this. See, first of all, again, since the BJP started growing, across India where minorities are a significant number, certain people tried to create a narration here. That the BJP is a party that stands for only a few and it's anti-minority, etc. But the people of India has completely rejected this kind of false narrations. And the election results which we are seeing across India is proof of that. You have states like Goa, you have states like the northeastern states, there are eight states there. Uh, and in these eight, nine states, except one state, every single state is governed by the NDA now. For example, you have states like Goa, the northeastern states, etc., where Christians are a large majority. A, like large number, even more than in Kerala. But every single state except one, means eight of the nine states in the northeast and Goa combined, it's governed by the Bharti and the party by ourselves or with our allies, the NDA. And this is because the people don't um, buy this narration people are trying to, our opposition is trying to create. They have full trust in our PM's uh, vision and they see the development work we are doing. For example, just in the northeast in the last um, uh, 10 years, we have spent more than 6 lakh crores for connectivity and 
infrastructure development. So people see all that. Now in Kerala, you have the Congress and the Communist Party, the LDF and the UDF, um, a deep-rooted ecosystem they have. They are all on the same side and they have a single objective of keeping BJP away from Kerala. This is their last bastion, one of the last bastions. So they will keep trying to create falsities among people. And, you know, very interesting, you spoke about Patanam Titta. Uh, the Shabrimala issue uh, has been one that the BJP has been very vocal about. It helped the party in 2019 as well. What is your vision for Patanam Titta? Because I also heard you comparing it to other uh, religious hubs like, say, Varanasi and Ayodhya and turning Patanam Titta also into a religious hub like that. See, this is a constituency with unlimited potential, like I keep mentioning. Um, you have 50, 60 colleges here, a large number of young people here, but they have very little opportunities in this district um, because um, um, because there are no industries, there are no small industries, there are no large industries. Uh, a few days back, just for the constituency, I had released a manifesto, which has a very clear blueprint of what we can do in the next five years. Um, this is a place where, like you rightly said, the Shabrimala temple is here. You have the Parim church here, you have the Erimili Jamaat uh, mosque here, you have Maraman convention here, you have Chergol Pula convention here, you have the Aranmula boat race here. You combine everything and this can be a large religious cultural hub. You look at Ayodhya, you look at Varanasi, you look at Somnath, you look at Tirupadi. These all have crores of people visiting their footfalls every year. Shabrimala itself every year has devotees from 50-60 countries that come here. It has lakhs of people coming from other parts of India, lakhs of people from Kerala. But then, sadly, because of the lack of infrastructure here, um, capacity here, uh, not uh, many people come to uh, this place and because of the lack of good connectivity to the place, they go back. Uh, so, um, I do sincerely think that this place can be made into a large religious cultural hub with Shabrimala at its center and this can um, be a large boost to this region's economy. Similarly, uh, this is a place that has a lot of scenic places like uh, Gavi, Vagaman, you have the Pamba River here. Very scenic places. It can be a large tourist hub, just like some other places in Kerala, like Alapi, like Idiki, Munar. But again, because of lack of connectivity, Again, this is a problem. You know, we are right behind, uh, in front of a church. I want to ask you, uh, there are several Christian denominations here. Do you think BJP finds accept acceptability among the Christian community? There have been several efforts that have been made by the party. But there's also a narrative that it is communal. So I want to ask you, in particular, uh, with the Christian community here, do you find acceptance, the BJP? See, again, like you, you yourself described, it's a narrative. But it's a narrative that is comprehensively rejected by the people of India. If you look at states like Goa, you look at the northeastern states, these are all states with a large number of Christian population. But every single state is right now owned by the BJP or by the NDA. And that is because the minorities there, especially the Christian population, have full trust in our PM's vision and what we are doing, the great work we are doing in all these areas. Now you look at Kerala also. First of all, our Honorable Prime Minister, we only, uh, we don't believe in religion and caste, etc. Our Prime Minister is focusing on four communities, Gari, Bio, Anadade and Nari, our women, our youth, our farmers and our poor people. You look at this constituency, most of the people are that only. And we have comprehensive plans to take them forward. In this constituency also, we have comprehensive plans to take our women, our youth, our farmers and our poor people forward. So, uh, irrespective of people's religion, caste, denominations, they all trust in that. They want that. They want development. They want progress. They want opportunities. They want avenues of social and economic mobility. So, the Christians, the Hindus, the Muslims, across section, you are going to see a significant rise for Bharatiya Janata Party's vote share in Kerala also because of the work we are doing. Lastly, I want to ask you, today is the first phase of the elections. Um, what do you say to the people? What can they expect across the country? And also, we have uh, Rahul Gandhi who has tweeted today to say the wounds that have been inflicted in the last 10 years, this is your chance to undo it. This is your chance uh, to ensure that hatred is gone and you can bring in politics of love. Uh, like I already said, Mr. Gandhi is cut off from India's political, social and economic, cultural, all kind of realities. Um, the last 10 years, India has seen unprecedented growth. The fastest growing economy, the IMF described us as a lone bright spot in a very turbulent world. Um, alongside that, we have uh, done uh, 
unprecedented amount of empowerment work. Uh, 4 crore houses, 40 crore tap water connections, 50 crore Aishman Bharat cards, 80 crore people under the PM Garib Kalyan Yojana. Every single Indian uses an e UPI. Uh, every single Indian is now using a digital public infrastructure. 140 crore Indians, every single household in India has been empowered and taken forward by a Prime Minister. And this is one of the few elections in India's history where there is no anti incumbency against a government. This is a pro Prime Minister wave across India, which will resonate across India, which is why we sincerely think that this election we will get more than 370 seats for the party, more than 400 seats for the coalition, more than 400 seats for the coalition. And once again, Mr. Uh, the Congress party led by Mr. Gandhi, just like 2014 and 19, will be waiting for you to wave. Just like the last two elections, the Congress party will be relegated to a spot where they will not even officially have a leader of opposition. For that, you need 10% seats. The last two elections, they didn't have it. This time also, that is another reality. But then, Mr. Gandhi is famous for making these kind of statements. Um, politics of love, when he himself is the person who is trying to divide society based on caste. When we are saying Sabka Saat, Sabka Viga, Sabka Vishwas and taking 140 crore Indians together, Mr. Gandhi is travelling across India talking about a caste census and trying to divide the society based on caste. Their entire manifesto, you look at the Congress manifesto, it reminds, reminds us of Mr. Mohammed Ali Jinnah's manifesto in the 1940s, which is trying to appease certain uh, minorities, polarize India's, uh, India based on minorities and majorities, divide society based on uh, caste lines. And then he is saying this is politics of love. So people of India see all this, people of India see through all this, people of India have complete trust in our Prime Minister. So we are very, very sure that Mr. Gandhi's statement, just like in the last 10 years, will be treated uh, as it should be by our people. And um, we are going to come back with full majority, bigger majority than last time. And, and the people of India will respond to Mr. Gandhi's statements. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for sparing your time. Uh, all the very best for your campaign. Well, the left and the Congress may be fighting it out in Kerala, but they are very united in one thing that they say. In the Charsopar dream of the BJP, the two zeros are going to be coming from Kerala. Who said this? What is the prediction for the BJP here? Uh, the left candidate is joining us on the other side of this very quick break to stay with us. With the CPIM's uh, Thomas Isaac, former finance minister in the Pinari Vijayan cabinet, uh, he is campaigning here. Sir, thank you for joining us. What is the main pitch when you're going to the voters? Why should they vote for the left? Well, um, there needs to be a strong presence of the left in the alternative to BJP government at the center. Um, it will be a corrective force. In the absence of it, I tell the disaster like what has happened to the rubber economy here. It's a rubber land. Mm. But in the first time of Monmohan Singh left a post, ASEAN agreement could not be signed. The second Manmohan term, there was no presence of left and disaster struck in the form of ASEAN agreement. So I tell them this our own experience shows that left is a necessity and that's why you should vote for me. Okay. Uh, it's a battle of the Antonys that we're seeing on the other side, Anil Antony versus the incumbent MP, Anto Antony. Uh, you're here from the left. Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, the fact that you have put up such a strong fight could help the BJP? Uh, BJP has no chance, zero chance. It will be a distant third, not even a close third. <laughs> Why is that? Because the BJP has also made an uh, outreach towards the Christian community as well. They made a consistent effort. Apart from that, the Shabrimala issue as well is extremely emotive. Do you think that could help the BJP? No, no. The, see, after a lot of water has flown since the last 2019 election, the last uh, assembly election, the, the parliament election, they gained something like 29%. The current election, the assembly election, the vote share came down to 16 percent. Uh, there is nothing has happened to ensure that, that the, their uh, persons, their vote share would increase. Uh, in fact, 
the Christian community bridges have been burned by Manipur incidents. But there have been several consistent efforts that have been made and the fact that they have also fielded the veteran Congress leader, uh, you know, A.K. Antony's son, Anil Antony, from the constituency, do you think that's going to make an impact? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> In fact, uh, suppose somebody has UB, real BJP stalwart, mm. like the Sridharan Pillai had contested from mm. here, I think the story would have been like a three-cornered fight. And it is no contest. No contest at all. Okay, and to Anthony, what do you say? He's a three-time MP. Uh, he is again contesting from the constituency. How much of a challenge is that? Oh, there is a strong anti-incumbency feeling towards uh, the MP. Of course, uh, the advantage that he has is connections of 15 years. But, well, I am not also unknown figure in Kerala. Let's see what happens. Okay. You know, there is an India alliance across the country. It's only in Kerala that the left and the Congress party are fighting it out. This is something that the Prime Minister has also mentioned, that they hug each other, dine with each other in Delhi, but in Kerala they're fighting it out. So do you think this fight between the left and the Congress should have been avoided? It's a, an alliance that could have been forged here? No, it's inevitable. Okay. I, we don't want to work at the space for BJP in Kerala. Okay, so what about the Congress party? Are you also ceding space to the Congress? Previously in 2019, Congress won 19 out of the 20 seats. Why was that? In 2004, we won 18 of the 20. <laughs> so, things, uh, Kerala things are a little topsy-turvy. Okay, I want to ask you how much of a factor is Rahul Gandhi? He's contesting from Wayanad. Many believe that that was also one of the factors that worked in favor of the Congress before. It doesn't work this time that much. Why is that? Uh, because uh, minority communities will let down by Rahul Gandhi a bit because he doesn't want to see any open alliance with, with Muslim minority in Kerala, like having common marches with flags and so on. And therefore, I think uh, enthusiasm for him is much lower. Okay, so you're saying that minorities are also unhappy with the Congress and Rahul Gandhi? Um, not all minority, Muslim minority particularly. And uh, that is going to make an impact on the elections in favor of the left. In favor of the left. Okay, I want to ask you, uh, you know, the Prime Minister, while he's campaigning here, has also spoken about big changes in uh, Kerala. He has said Charso Par. He expects uh, double digits here as well for the BJP. What do you say? That's what uh, throws doubts on since his 400 figure. It uh, includes two zeros from Kerala. <laughs> He's not going to make any double digit, not even a single digit. BJP is not going to win any seat in Kerala. Okay, double zeros from Kerala, that's what he's going to be getting. Uh, Rahul Gandhi yesterday while campaigning said that the BJP never hits out at the left, the left doesn't hit out at the BJP. He seemed to be indicating that there's an uh, understanding between left and the BJP. What would you say to that? Rahul is made to be silly. <laughs> he should be of stature enough to avoid this kind of prank statements. Uh, I don't know how a leader of India um, friend should could, can come to Kerala and make such statements. Yeah. Maybe misguided by somebody. <laughs> okay. uh, very lastly, I want to ask you, realistically, give us numbers. What do you expect for the Congress? What do you expect for the left? And what do you expect for the BJP? No, I don't want to give numbers like that. Uh, but I, I think anything above 12. A sweep for the left here? Yes, 12. And BJP? None. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Thomas Isaac, for joining us. So this is the campaign trail of Thomas Isaac as we're uh, continuing our campaign trail in Patanam Titta. He says the BJP is going to get a big zero. The left is going to have a sweep. But he goes on to take a dig at the Congress party as well. He says Rahul Gandhi is a silly leader. He perhaps does not even know what the ground situation is, and that's the reason why he has been attacking left. It's time for us to bid adieu. Uh, today we were in Patanam Titta and then Kochi. Our next stop is Vayanad. We'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. from the high stakes battle in the Vayanad constituency. But as high pitched as the battle is on the election ground, let's leave you with this special art, martial arts form from Kerala. <laughs>